So one of the things that um, I'll, just, I'll just mention briefly, um, or maybe not so briefly, about the paper that was written that uh, compiled all of this data from the red gray chips. The first thing that we wanted to do was to establish that all of the chips were similar. And that they, and, all, and when I say all of the chips, chips collected from the different dust samples that were collected from different areas um, in, in Manhattan, from different individuals who are not associated. So w once we collected different chips from the different samples, we then took photomicrographs as well as um, looking at them, looking at them in the uh, in the uh, scanning electron microscope, um, and then compositional analysis of both the red layer and the gray layer, and all of these things showed that these red gray chips are the same. The compositional analysis of the red layer was the same. The compositional analysis of the gray layer was the same. Their appearance uh, and 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 cleavage habit or or microstructure appeared the same. Um, all of those things appeared the same. Then we ran uh, multiple samples through the DSC, the the differential scanning calorimeter, and found that they behaved almost identical. The the peak heights were very similar. The location of the peaks were exact, and uh, so once we were able to establish that these things were all the same, um, that's when we, that we were able to then, um, with more confidence, try and determine what these things really were. Uh, and so now what we, what we have is from the composition, from the, uh, the composition of the red layer, we have an aluminum peak, we have a silicon peak, we have the iron and the oxygen, as well as other peaks. And, and one of the things that we did to ensure that we weren't getting surface contamination was we just took some of these chips, which are very, very small, by the way, and under a microscope, we were able to cleave these chips or break them in half and then study the, the fresh or the broken surface so that we weren't getting surface contamination. Um, these things were coming in, in uh, bags of dust. So uh, who knows what kind of contamination you'd get on the surface. So we, we were looking at these broken or these clean uh, edges in order to get the composition. And that's where we found the silicon as well as the aluminum peaks and the uh, iron and oxygen peaks in, in abundance and, in, and throughout all of the, the, um, the red layers in all of these chips. Um, the gray layer was also interesting. We found that that was uh, mostly iron and oxygen. And again, each gray layer was identical in its compositional analysis as well as its appearance. Um, and then uh, what we found in the, from the DSC um, there, was, there was actually some significant findings in the residue. After igniting these chips in the DSC, we found uh, microspheres that were uh, very shiny in appearance. Some of them were, were almost glassy, a little translucent. And we found that the composition of, the, of, the, uh, of these microspheres, of these very small spheres, uh, many of these spheres had the exact or identical, uh, identical composition or very similar composition as the spheres that Steve was finding in the dust samples. They were also very similar to spheres found in thermite, in commercial thermite. Uh, once, once you ignite commercial thermite, you, get, uh, you also get microspheres. And the composition was very, very similar. Um, and that led to the conclusion of the paper, which was, we've got some form of thermite in these red-gray chips. And I think it's a very, very strong conclusion. Um, there have been some that have, have argued that these red-gray chips could be paint of some form. We actually did a study on uh, we did a study on some epoxy paint. We put that in the DSC. We found that that paint would just would just burn up and, and turn to ash. So um, you may get a, a minor exothermic peak, but it's nothing. It's not energetic. It's a very smooth, wide peak, and uh, it's certainly not an energetic material. As part of the residue uh, of the paint that we that we ignited in the DSC, um, the actual paint there was it was basically ash. There were no microspheres found in in the paint sample that had been ignited in the DSC. Um, we also took paint that came off of the WTC steel 
and looked at that in the SEM and, and did a compositional analysis of that and found that it was not similar to the red-gray chip or the red layer of the red-gray chips. Um, so it wasn't, the red-gray chips are not the primer paint that was used on the WTC steel. There are a lot of questions that came up during the paper that have been left unanswered um, or that are, that are unanswered and, and need to be answered. Um, uh, just an example, what is the gray layer? What was the, what was the purpose of the gray layer? We know it has a lot of iron, we know it has a lot of oxygen, and um, we've found that uh, we do see some, uh, uh, there's a hematite phase, um, but there are other phases present in that gray layer, and we don't know quite what that gray layer is or how it's adhered to the red layer. Certainly further study needs to be done. Um, we certainly need to be doing more work to find out what that is. Occasionally we would find an intermediate layer between the, the red layer and the gray layer, which was rich in carbon, perhaps a polymer type layer. Um, but again, we, don't, we, we need to, to go further with that study to, to figure out what those things are. There are some, some characteristics of the red layer that are rather significant. Uh, one is that it, 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 it's not homogeneous. There are different uh, particles or grains within the red layer that we studied. Um, one appeared very bright under backscattered electron uh, microscopy, which indicates a, a heavier phase. And we looked into those small particles. They were, they were rhombohedral in shape and very consistent throughout the, the layer. They were about uh, 100 nanometers in size, roughly. Um, and very consistent in both their size, um, the, the shape of them, and as well as the, the composition that we could get from the SEM. Additional studies in the TEM found that these were iron oxide phases. So these particles, these small uh, bright particles, they appear bright in the SEM images in the paper. Um, these were, in fact, uh, iron oxide phases that we were able to uh, pin down using uh, the transmission electron microscope. There were other phases present as well, or other particles present in the, in the red layer. Um, there were some plate-like phases, or plate-like particles, and, uh, and those, all, again, those were uh, consistent throughout the red layer, throughout all of the samples that we found. Um, and, and those appeared to have uh, a higher uh, aluminum and silicon peaks in their compositional analysis. And um, one of the significant things about what we find in the red layer is um, the fact that these, these particles that we find in the red layer um, are, are the fact that they're consistent and the fact that, I mean, consistent in shape and in composition and in size uh, leads me to believe that, that these things are not naturally occurring materials. The red layer is not a naturally occurring material. Sure, you have iron oxide everywhere, um, that you have iron, you get an iron oxide, but you don't get them in nice little 100 nanometer rhombohedral shaped uh, particles inside of uh, this red inside of a red layer, a very small red layer. And by the way, these, um, just to give you a reference on the size, these particles that are in the red layer are thousands of times smaller than, say, the width of a human hair. So these are very sophisticated particles, uh, very sophisticated materials, not materials that we would expect to find in uh, the, uh, the, the demolition debris of, of, a, of a building. In order to get that kind of consistency with shape and size and, and, and to be that small, um, these really are sophisticated materials and probably only developed in, in a laboratory. They may be processed outside of a laboratory, but they're developed in a laboratory. There were several other things that, uh, um, that were found that, uh, that we put into the paper that I think are very significant, and the, the conclusion of the paper really does fit well with the data that we collected. Um, our conclusions were that, that the red-gray chips are some form of thermite or a nanothermite or, or uh, an energetic material which is very similar to thermite. Um, and the, those conclusions are very, very, it's a, it's a very strong conclusion given the data. Now others may say, well, could it be something else? Certainly. It certainly could be something else. I'm not about to say that we've, we've you know, completely uh, ruled out everything. But uh, the conclusions we made in the paper are very strong given the data. If there's another possibility, 
that's, uh, you know, that's something that somebody can come forward with uh, using the same very stringent scientific method that we used in this paper and, uh, and publish that and, and uh, they'll find, I, 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 can, I can guarantee they will find that our work is completely reproducible. If, if you find other red-gray chips, they will look and, and have the same composition and the same behavior in the calorimeter as the red-gray chips that we found. Now, if they come up with different conclusions than we do, that's their prerogative, of course, and I'd like to see that. I'd like to see other people looking at these things because that reproduces our results and it also uh, brings us to a, a discussion which, is, which needs to happen. We need to be talking about this. There needs to be another investigation of the events of that day. Um, and that's why, that's why I signed the petition at a &E, uh, at the a &E website, a &E, uh, for 9-11 Truth, um, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. That's why I signed the petition, and I, I do believe there needs to be another investigation.